Maintaining Membership Episode 2. We're here to show people how to maintain their membership using in-game bonds and in-game currency, not spending any real-life money. And honestly, the best way to do this is for you yourself to log in, type colon colon wiki space money space making, hit enter, a web page opens up and shows you a list of an insane amount of money-making methods. Find the best one you can do. And do it over and over and over again until you've got enough money for a bond, buy a bond, redeem the membership, boom. I've just saved you however long this video is in minutes. You don't actually have to watch this whole video, that's all you have to do, just find your best money making methods, but I would really appreciate it if you watch the video anyway, you should definitely just watch it. Last week on Maintaining Membership, we fire strike some dragons, cut some logs, and done some hardcore parkour. This week we're doing a whole lot more. We're back week two, day two. We actually didn't play on day one on the Monday, yesterday didn't touch the game. And we're on our way to complete Priest in Peril because I want to access the swamp area. Continuing the theme from the last video and from the original Escaping Free to Play series, I'm playing this game as a casual player while trying to also make money. So even though overall it is a money making guide, technically, it also has some progress elements. I just want to show that it is possible to play casually while also maintaining membership with in-game currency and bonds. Are those empty bottles of gin? I feel sorry for this dog. Sits down here alone, drinking alone in its room. Oh wait a minute, it sounds like me. Quest complete, we can now enter Mauritania. And the first thing we're going to do is grind out some agility. Anyone who's playing this game and is a member should train agility. It's not very fun, but doing rooftop agility gives you good agility XP and marks of grace so you can finally get a graceful outfit which helps you run around the world without losing as much energy. Now we're on the way to start the nature spirit quest. Completing that unlocks a money making method in this swamp that I want to experiment with. There it is complete. A decent amount of XP actually. And now using our blessed silver sickle we can spawn in this Mortmire fungus here on the logs. It costs prayer points to do so but we can harvest them and they're worth a decent amount of GP. There's a few downsides to doing it right now however the bank is really far away. I don't have access to the fairy rings and I've got no prayer potions to recharge my prayer. I have to go back to the nature spirit's grotto to recharge my prayer points and the banks on the other end of the swamp. It's not ideal to do this money maker just yet. So we will revisit this once we've unlock the fairy rings by completing the fairy tale quest part one and starting part two. Day eight, we've done a couple of quests, done a little bit of agility, no big deal, we weren't on too long. 100 marks of grace. I can get one, maybe two pieces of the graceful outfit which still help in recharging your run energy, so maybe I should go buy some of those bad boys. Level 50 agility, that's it. I'm done with agility for these two weeks, no more. Let's buy the graceful cape and some graceful legs, that will use up my 100 graceful tokens. This shop is found in birth rope under the pub, there's a trap door to climb down, and the shop also sells something called amylase. You can trade in your graceful tokens for a box of amylase, it's 10 tokens for 100 amylase, and you can sell it on the grand exchange, which means each graceful token can be worth around 12 or 13 kgp. They're actually fairly valuable. It's definitely worth getting your graceful outfit first, then buying amylase, but if you're in a very tight spot and your membership's about to run out, and you've got a bunch of graceful tokens, it could be worth trading them in for Amelie, selling it on the Grand Exchange and buying yourself a bond. With the 100 marks of grace I had, I could have traded them in for roughly 1.3 million GP. I'm going to buy a candle, use a tinder box to light it, go down into this dungeon, go down these stairs, cut this web with my scimitar and pick up these boots of lightness. Putting them on actually reduces your total amount of weight, which aren't as good as graceful boots, but they'll do until I get them. This dungeon can be found in this area on the map. I fancy training my combat stats, so I'll do it with Slayer. I've almost got 40 defense, I can almost wear that coveted Ruin armor. I have spent a couple of hundred K on Ruin armor, Ruin boots, I'm fairly kitted out for the level that I am. Now I've got to slay like 150 ice warriors. How exciting. I just got 40 strength, I've got base, 40 melee combat stats, that's okay. Now I can do some more quests and do some more quest bosses, including Fairy Tale Part 1 that has a boss at the end, so that's why I'm kind of training combat in preparation for it. But it's getting late, so I'm going to do an AFK money making method that I showed off in the last video stringing you longbows, buying bowstring and unstrung you longbows, 
stringing them together for about 400 kgp per hour and it's af cable. you do need 70 fletching so day 10 we got our graceful set we got some rune armor we done a little bit of slayer we done a little bit of fletching day 11 i just finished off the bows and as you can see we made about a 300 kgp profit and it took less than an hour before i unlock the fairy rings i need to complete jungle potion there it is done and the lost city quest there it is, done. Now we can start Fairy Tale Part 1. Fighting the quest boss here, Tangle Root was one of the reasons why we decided to level up our melee stats so we could wear some decent armor with our magic secateurs, the little green things, because you're not allowed to use a real weapon. Part 1 completed. It's definitely a quest worth doing. You unlock one of the best traveling methods in the game, the Fairy Rings, and you get a good chunk of farming XP to skip the initial farming levels, which is incredibly useful. Now let's start Part 2. I know so far this money making guide doesn't really seem like a money making guide instead some crappy progress video but I promise we're getting there slowly but surely we've reached the point in the fairy tale part 2 quest where we have unlocked fairy rings I can't actually complete this quest that requires a higher thieving level a higher farming level and a higher herb lore level all of which I cannot do so I can't complete this quest there's no point in continuing with it anyway because we've got the fairy rings I'm testing out picking Mortmire fungus using prayer potions and not praying at any altar and just using the fairy ring nearby in the swamp to go to the bank. The way I'm doing it is I start off in Xanaris Bank with a prayer potion or two in my inventory along with my blessed silver sickle. I use the fairy ring code on the screen to travel to the swamp, run west until I have these three logs in a triangle formation, stand in the middle, cast bloom and pick up all the Mortmire fungus. Once I've got a full inventory or I've run out of prayer potions, run back to Xanaris, use the bank, rinse and repeat. Because of my low prayer points and I'm having to use prayer potions instead of praying at an altar, I'm actually only making roughly 150k per hour. It's actually really bad. Making bowstring is better money making than I'm doing right now. I'm still making profit technically, so it's still benefiting my journey to getting a bond, but if I can make bowstring or even make you long bows for better money, why would I do this? Right now this method isn't good, but it can be better. I have a 2 mil cash stack. I'm going to spend half of that on prayer experience. 343 Dragon Ball. We're heading to World 330 Remington Playground House Portal because there's hosts. We can enter a host's house and use their altar. So there's an NPC right outside the Playground House Portal that unnotes your bones for you. It costs GP, that's why I've got my cash stack. So you unnote an inventory of bones, go into a host's Playground House, use the bones on the altar and rinse and repeat, really. Pretty easy, pretty insanely quick prayer experience. The bones got me 48 prayer that went from 22 to 48. I've unlocked all of the protection prayers, so that's a pretty good investment. Prayer is a good investment in general, so don't be afraid to spend a little bit of GP on it. I've got 31 bones left, not enough to get me a level, so I'm just going to sell them back on the Grand Exchange. And once again, something I've done a lot in the last video that you should definitely go watch, by the way, if I haven't said that before. Stringing new longbows, it's an incredibly good money-making level for low-level members. It's about 400k GP per hour, and it's a second monitor experience, or a tabbed-out experience, whatever you want to call it. It's super af cable, so I can go watch YouTube videos or play another game or something while making some GP. So for day 11 we just done some quests, tried out some Mortmire fungus money making method, done a little bit of prayer, done a little bit of fletching, it was pretty chill all in all. I tried out the Mortmire fungus money making method once again using the exact same method but with more prayer, it didn't really make it much better. It did slightly but it wasn't really worth doing. And that's all I'd done that day, I'd done it for a couple of hours, I've made a couple of hundred kgp, it was like 300 kgp per hour so it wasn't too bad but wasn't the best. There's one more way I want to try this money making method because I want to make it work and that's doing the RD easy diary to unlock the RD cape which gives me a teleport to a monastery so I can recharge my prayer points without buying normal prayer potions which are incredibly expensive and cut into the profits of doing this money making method. So now my method of doing Mortmire fungus does not involve prayer potions. I go to the same spot, collect a full inventory of fungus, teleport to castle wars using a dueling ring which are really cheap, it doesn't basically doesn't cut into the profits whatsoever. Use the castle wars bank which is right next to the teleport spot, then use my newly acquired RD cloak to teleport to the monastery, use the altar, recharge my prayer points, run to their nearby fairy ring which is to the east, teleport to the swamp, 
rinse and repeat. Ok, let's see what it's worth. In one hour I picked 644 Wartmeyer fungus. Take away the cost of the dueling rings, it's basically only slightly above 400k GP per hour, which is roughly the same as my stringing you longbows money making method, and that's more AFKable, and you get XP from it, you don't get XP from picking Mortmire fungus. Completing the hard Mauritania diary does double the amount of fungus you pick up when you're doing this method, but until I've got that done, I may as well stick to fletching you longbows. It's a lot faster. Or should I say stringing you longbows, not fletching them. Fortunately, picking this fungus and experimenting with the money making methods of it hasn't been an entirely waste of time. Although it hasn't been the optimum GP per hour method that I could be doing, it made me just under 1 million GP actually, all in all. A little bit of AFK fletching to wind down to wrap up the day I've been playing for a few hours. So I've done some quests, I've done an achievement diary, done some Mortmire fungus, and done some fledging. Account progress and money making. This is the last. Day. I've got to make roughly 1 million GP. Sure, for a lot of experienced players, making 1 mil GP in a single day, absolutely no problem. You can make 1 mil GP in 20 minutes if you've got the right requirements. But, as I've stated before, I'm playing this as if I was a super casual player only a few hours per day, and I still have to match that theme here today on the final day, so I've only got 2 or 3 hours to make 1 million GP on a low level members account. And although I could make over 1 million GP just stringing you longbows like I've been doing for the last 2 weeks, I wanted to mix up a little bit on the last day, so I done what I recommended everyone should do at the start of the video, I typed in the game chat, colon colon, wiki space money space making, and checked out the list. The best money making thing I could do a couple of weeks ago when I was actually recording this was tanning black dragon hide. So you'd buy black dragon hide, tan it to turn it into black dragon leather. At this moment in time during the editing it is a 566k GP per hour money making method that has zero requirements and it's better than any other money making method I've done in this series. However, a couple of weeks ago when I was actually filming this it was 700-800k GP per hour. Even better. And that's what I'm doing right now I spent about 3 million GP on 1000 black dragon hide. Now I teleport to Alcred using one of my rings of dueling, head to the tanning shop in Alcred, it has like a little t-shirt symbol, you trade with them, you turn your black dragon hide into black dragon leather, it costs a couple of GP, you then bank the black leather in the bank just to the left of the shop, to the south of the shop, they're right nearby, bring out another inventory of hides, rinse and repeat, I was making about 7k GP profit every inventory and it only took like 20 seconds to do an inventory, it was a pretty bang in money making method. Obviously the more graceful pieces of the outfit you have the better because this requires a lot of run energy, the higher your agility the better and it might even be worth using stamina potions to help you run back and forth so you're never walking like I'm doing right now. I sold the leather I made for a decent amount of profit, it was a couple of hundred k GP in just 30 minutes or so. I bought even more hides, it's time to go back. I actually timed it for 30 minutes and I made about 300k profit in 30 minutes which means I was making about 600k GP profit per hour and that was me being impatient in the grand exchange because I've only had like an hour or two to make this money, I didn't wait for things to sell or buy on the grand exchange. If you're patient and you put in buy offers for a lower price and put in sell offers for a higher price and just wait, more often than not you'll make more money than you should have if you were impatient. And doing this method I have made more than enough money to buy myself an old school bond to redeem to have myself another 14 days of membership. So in 14 days I made decent account progress playing as a casual player maybe 1, 2, 3, up to 4 hours per day. I would mix up, one day I would only play for an hour, some days I didn't even play at all and some days I would play for 3 or 4 hours. Just like a casual player would. Sometimes you've got more time to play and sometimes you don't want to play whatsoever. I got some decent stats. I've done a bunch of quests and I made 5 million GP to buy myself another bond with over 100k GP left over, not as much as I would like to have remainder because I only have enough to buy a few pieces of armour, but it will do, I managed to get myself a bond starting off with basically nothing, I can certainly do it again having more stats, more quests completed and starting off with 173k cash. Thank you very much for watching this video, if you enjoyed it please leave a rating and subscribe, why not subscribe? And if you want to support the channel you can do so in a variety of ways, you can become a channel member, it's only 99 cents and you get a bunch of perks for doing so. And we have some new merchandise, there's mugs, t-shirts and now tank tops, so if you're a tank top wearing guy or girl you can you can buy tank tops now. Big thanks to all channel members including Vicken, Rough Giraffes, Mr. Granley, Mitchell H, Tamashi, Deranged, White Fox, or Nemo M and the Beardy Jakes for being high tier channel members. And I have a second channel, there is a link on the screen right now, it's the one below my main channel. Check it out, subscribe to it. Thank you very much.